嗯，没有，不会，不会切割。你说无限制？没有，只是那一条会很诡异，而且它很直，太直了，是一条线。你如果是那个的。我怎么不见了？画面怎么不见了？这里。Okay, welcome back. Um, I'm going to just、uh, go straight to the next section. So I need everyone to unmute your microphone because I hear sound from different people. And、uh, if you have any question of the previous talk, just、uh, feel free to throw your question to the chat. And Melissa and I and Tim later will answer in the Q and A. So we'll come back. So in this session, I'm going to talk about the civic crew and the uh, Hungarian uh, Natural History Museum data sharing policy. I think. So I think it's really important that、uh, to talk about、uh, the data sharing policy because、uh, people always, I always always got this question is、uh, from people is、uh, is that safe?、Uh, I share my data with people. So this is the question. So this is concern of the people. So you spend a lot of time,、uh, went to the forest, went to the mountain, and、uh, spend whole night and.、Uh, Standing with the mosquito and、uh, maybe during the rain, collect data. So if you're lucky, you can collect more than 300 bats in one night, and then maybe over 15 species. But sometimes, especially in Taiwan or northern part of Asia, you won't get so many bats. Sometimes you only get one bat per night, one species. Sometimes you get nothing. So you spend so much time in the field, and、uh, you come back to the office. You 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 prepare the specimen. You identify species. You enter all the data to the computer. Then some people come to you say, "Can you share the data with me?" So people always think, "Is why should I share my data with you?" Or you ask, "Is that safe if I share my data?" So in my point of view, I don't think that's the most important question when you talk about data sharing. I would like to ask the think from the other way: Is why sharing data is important? Or What's the benefits you can get if you share your data with people? So first is, you can get a publication. If you publish your data on the open plat sharing plat database, such as GBIF, you can get a DOI. So it's a citable. You can also publish your data on data paper, and that's what we are going to. Melissa will talk in the next section. And also, if you join our project, we are going to compile everyone's data. And to publish at least one review papers and some data papers together, so you can get more publication. 
So in addition to publication, there are a lot of other benefits that you can have if you share your data with the publics, with more audience, not your, just yourself. You can get uh, free additional backups, okay? So it's not just a specific data, you can archive your data in the GB. If you want an additional, an additional backup of your audio recordings or your pictures, you can also share your data with GB or with ABCD or other databases. And also life is limit and you also have a limit of your capability in looking for collecting data and samples. So most of us have the gaps in our collection but everyone expect more from other people. For example, you have your own reference code. You want to identify the best pieces in the coding you collect from field. But you don't know. Oh, I need people to unmute. Um, so you 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 expect people help you to identify the best pieces in your recording, or you want to identify yourself. But uh, let's say you have a 100 best species in your country, you spend your whole career, you probably can only collect 80% of the species, the call from the 80% of species. So you are still not able to identify all the species in your recording. So what if you want to do it? So you need to share the data. So people will share data with you. So you cooperate with people. So you build up the code classifiers for your country, for your study area together. So you can also gain experience for publication. So especially for young scholars, such as students, you have your, you collect your data during your thesis and dissertation projects, but you have very limited experience of publication and the, do the data pu publication of data sets and data paper is relatively easier for young people, but it's, it's much, once you gain experience, it will be easier for you to uh, have a more serious publication later. Okay. Uh, it's also uh, you, when you in the uh, maybe you will need to do the species status assessment for your uh, the species in your country, or you got assignment from the IUCN to ask you to help them to uh, to assess to evaluate the conservation status of the species in your country, because you are the specialist in your country, or you will become a specialist in the future. And how can you date, get data? So if you look at the bad data in GB as demonstrated by team. There are so many data, more than 2 million data in the GBIF, okay, but it's only 2% of data from South Asia and also a very small proportion of the bad data from the other part of Asia. So how can you evaluate the species? You, 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 only, you won't be able to collect the data of bats from the whole country or from the entire distribution range. So you will need help. So uh, once, also once you've got more data, you can ask questions further. So, Let's come back to the project architecture. Just uh, recall your memory of how we run the project. So uh, if you join our project at the beginning, you share your reference code with the AB, through the ABCD. So uh, you archive your record, audio recording and a, a, a species data in the ABCD. And later you, we transfer the species occurrence data from ABCD to CB crew database, then, G, then, then GB for database. So for our project, for our data sharing policy, we actually, we have a different data sharing policies for each of the status. So ABCD have their own data sharing policy for the audio recording and also the species occurs data attached. We also have the CV crew data sharing uh, policy for the species occurrence data transferred from ABCD or if you don't have any audio recordings, you want to contr contribute your spatial occurrence data, you can direct, it, direct your data to CB crew and to the GB. But when, you, when the data goes through the CB crew database, we also have our data, own data policy and GB and also have their data sharing policy. So I will start uh, this session from the GB data sharing policy, okay. So the GB uh, use the Creative Command license, or it's a short for the CC license. Uh, if you're not familiar with the CC license, it's a, uh, it's a legal license that the people designed to help the global creator to share their uh, intelligent property uh, with the users. So it's very different from the all right reserve that you used to get to know. Okay, uh, this uh, 
license uh, design and the publish and the wider use since 2002 until now. And now it's a version four. Um, the, uh, and the design is a three layer design. So they have a legal, a legal code, which means uh, if someone violate and, uh, and use your data appropriate, uh, you can go to court because they have the legality. So the CC license has been registered in more than 100 countries over the world. And also they designed the, the symbol that are human readable. So that's important. Once you see the sign of the CC license, you, it's very easy to understand what it means and how much you can use the, the data from people. They also have the, the barcode behind uh, the CC license, which is also machine readable. So that's allowed us to share the data through uh, the internet, through the computer because machine don't read the symbol and the words we understand they read something else. And uh, uh, so that's, that's, that's go to this uh, very nice back picture I took from Asia, Southeast Asia. So you often see people share their uh, pictures of bats on internet. And uh, people like to share sharing the pictures, not just, for, um, uh, not just bats. Uh, uh, you can see a lot of people that put uh, this sign C, which means uh, stand for copyright. So if I put a C in circle with my name, this means this picture, the copyright of those pictures are belong to this guy, Joe, which is me. So people are expecting that, okay, I share my pictures online and people can download my picture and use in their presentations or share uh, or reshare on Facebook or any other internet platforms, but they have to put your names so if you are thinking this way, you are not probably not correct in 100% because if you really put a copyright sign with your name on any pictures or any other intellectual properties, people are not allowed to share your picture online or use in their presentation without confirmation or permission from you personally. They have to ask you personally to get permission it's not as simple that you put this sign so people can, you can share your picture with people. Once you see this sign, you cannot take, you cannot take a picture of my screen. If you see people put a copyright sign and their name on their presentation during a conference, you are not allowed to video, you are not allowed to take picture of those slides. You are not able to share the picture on Facebook if I put on Facebook. You're not to share my picture in Twitter. You're not allowed to use the picture in your presentation. Okay, so. But so what, what's the solution? So CC license actually gives you a solution that you, you can share your picture or any of your improper, uh, properties online on presentation <laughs> and asking you. <laughs> so it's an easier way for you to share the data. And then you are using this commonly in your life in YouTube in plus one or in uh, uh, or in uh, Freaker, okay. So we also heavily rely on the CC license in the uh, sign, sign, uh, 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 citizen scientists, for example, if uh, you are uh, iNature I user, when you first register the, the, in the iNaturalist, they will, if you read the term, they also say, everything you share through iNaturalist, you must license with the CC license, including the pictures and also species data so this also applies to the data you share through the TV. Okay, once you publish your data, to TV, you must license a CC license to your data sets and every individual data. So if you are interested in the details of the CC license, you go to TV or iNaturalist or just Google it. There are a lot of details. Okay, so I just uh, will go a little bit more about the CC. Uh, I really need uh, everyone to unmute your microphone because we got sound from people always. Thank you. So, uh, so there are different conditions of the CC license. So we have the attribution and the share like and no commercial and the no derived work. So uh, I'm not going, I won't go through the detail but attribution means once uh, you put uh, the attribution condition with the CC license, uh, you, might, you can put a name and when people use your picture or your data, they must uh, give the credit to the persons. Okay, so with, the, so with these conditions, you can have a different combination of conditions with the create 
uh, seven different types of the CC license for the version four. So uh, I, I won't go through everyone, but from the top until the, uh, to the bottom is from the most open condition to the most restricted conditions. And what's the, what's the type of the CC license applied to the GB publication? So GB accepts three types of CC licenses, including CC0, CC BY, and the CC BY NC. So what does it mean? So if you issue your data set with CC0 license, that's mean the, when people use your data, they don't have to mention your name. So this is the option that people usually don't go because you always, as a scientist, as a researchers, you always want people credit your research. So you are very kind to share your data with GB, with people through GB or through CB crew. And of course you want to use credits. So at least you want people to know the data is from you. But this option for, uh, the, uh, of, uh, for people not uh, credit you. So if you choose CC0, that's mean if you don't have to put your name when they use your data. So the other two categories of a CC license uh, people usually go, so that, uh, namely CC BY and CC BY NC. If you, uh, you license your data set with CC BY and CC BY NC, people must create, put your name when they use your data. Okay, if you license your data set with CC BY NC, which means people are not able to use your data for commercial activities. Yeah. If you figure out people use your data or people figure out people use your, your uh, recording for commercial activities, uh, that's the, means they violate the license. So you can put them in the court. So when you publish your data to GB, you have to choose one of these license to attach with your data set and every individual data. So this is for the GB publication, but let's come back to the ABCD and the CB crew. So ABCD and the CB crew have their own data sharing policy for the acoustic recording and also the individual, uh, the species across data. Uh, with the limited time, I will also only do the ABCD uh, data sharing policy quickly. And uh, so uh, there's only three pages. So you, first you fill the name of the data holder and the, or if you're not able to fill the form by yourself, you can ask the representative for, uh, to sign the form for you, for example, your students. So uh, you can name your data set here and also put how many data in the video of code you want to share with people. Uh, you need to put, uh, the contact information, such email or the phone number or the address of the data holder and also uh, the representative here. So later we will be able to touch you to discuss further use of the data if you give a lot of restriction of your data. We also need you to fill the desired citation form of your data set here, uh, including the author's name, and also name of data set later when we publish data to GB and also ABCD and CB crew database. Okay, so this is the definition of some of the terms. I'm not going through the details here. And here are the most important. When you publish your recording and specific current data through this project, start from ABCD, through GB, this is what you really need to pay attention. It's first, you have to decide what's the license you want to give to your recording. Okay, so on the first section here, you need to decide if you want to give the CC license to share your recording, audio recording with people through ABCD. You can also choose the less open option that you can archive your, uh, your recordings in the ABCD database and people can see how many data how many recording you contribute to the database, but they'll not be able to access without permission from you. So we do understand people need some, uh, have concern of uh, the competition of research and the publication, or especially if uh, your students you need time to finish your thesis and dissertation. So we can give people time to uh, have the priority to publish your data first. So in the second se section, section of this page, you can see there are another options. So you can decide how long, what's the time lag like you want to hold in the data before you share the data with people through the ABCD and CB crew. And you can also decide whether you want to share the specific occurrence data attached with the recording through the project through ABCD. So that's the option. Once you choose the options here, we automatically decide that after you, you agree to share the specific data with GB and the CB crew database. 
and later you say your name and we also got the the uh, the representative from the ABC the Dr. Dr. Troba from Hungarian Nature History Museum to sign here so you can have the copy that to show that uh, uh, we got permission from you to use the data so CB crew also have a very similar uh, data sharing policy uh, I, I, we don't have time to go through uh, all the all the details but later uh, I will uh, if you need, I will send the form to you and explain to you. Thank you. Okay, so we have last session. So Melissa will talk about uh, why it's important to publish your data on data journal and how can you do it quickly by the next 15 minutes. Well, um, Joe, please give me the permission to share my screen. And okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everyone. And um, Melissa from Typeif. Uh, I will. I'm going to talk about what is a data paper and why you should publish a data paper and how how you prepare and make your data set become a data paper. So if you have the experience of publishing a data set to JBIF, you may know that you can download them, uh, file your data set from the JBIF and also get the citation or DOI uh, CC license or DOI citation from it. But why we still suggest you to publish a data paper in the fir uh, first, it can be citable with credits. And second, if your, uh, if your data or research has novelty, like is a new record or is a new taxonomy uh, of your research, you can publish your data in a fast way to be the lead of your research field. And third, it can increase the visibility of your data set and make it as a structure uh, readable form and then people can reuse it easily. So also you can get more chances to cooperate with others and to expand the global and regional research network. And the, I think the best thing is might be that it will also be attractive to founder and maybe they can uh, support you with more funding. Okay. And let me get, give you more reasons to publish a data paper. If you are a scholar or a professor, uh, publishing a data paper can increase citation of your research and also earn a academic credits. And what kind of academic credits? In fact, there are many data journals has have impact factor and scope scope size scores. Okay, and if you are a student or you have a graduate stu graduated students, they only need to take the methods and results parts from their thesis, then it would be easier for them to publish a data paper than a scientific paper. So on the other hand, for the advisors, students will leave. So you can let them to organize and manage their data set online and publish before they they graduate the graduate. And you can easier you can easy to find the data back. So it's a kind of win-win situation. And if you are working in um, non-governmental organizations or other types of organizations. You may leave the job or the project may not continue. So you can also get the credits from your work by publishing data papers. And also it would be a solid reference for biodiversity conservation. So what is a data paper? Basically, is a citable and peer-reviewed description of your data. 
And you should notice that it's not a kind of research investigation. So you, you may not need to write down the discussion and the hy hypothesis of your research in your data paper. And there are two parts of two main components of a data paper. One is the description of data set. And uh, in this part, the sampling protocol, how you generate your data, how you get your data, and how you um, do the quality control, it would be important part. Okay. And the second part is that where uh, is your online data set? And it is usually with the URL link or DO and DOI citation. Okay, and I'm going to talk about the tips and considerations when you write, when writing a data paper and picking up a data journal. And we will go through uh, with format effort, writing effort and requirements of data quantity and significance and the list of data journals. Okay. Someone might uh, worry about if they want to publish a data paper, do they need to reformating, uh, reformate their data again to fit the every different kind of data paper journal? And let me tell you now, there's no need for reformating your data. You don't need to do anything after you publish your data set to GBIF. So all, all you need to do is tell everyone where is your data set. And how about the description of data set part? Then if you download the metadata file from GBIF of your data set, you can get these informations like uh, data set name, authors and authors information, citation, abstract, project details, etc. And these are uh, the metadata of your data set. Um, you can also say it's a kind of basic information or background of your data set. If someone wants to cite your data set and they want to know it can be reusable or suitable for their research, then they will read the metadata first. And after you download the metadata file, you can choose a data paper journal and following their, gui their guideline and fit all the contents in. So I'll take a biodiversity data journal, for example, because it provides a useful data paper writing tool, which is called Alpha Writing Tool, and also is based on GB format. And you can sign up this tool and start a new manuscript for free. And after you choose the journal and the type of outcomes, then you can import the metadata files that you just download from GBIF. So after you importing the file, the basic manuscript, manuscript will be formed. And how basic is it? It's about 60% uh, of a completed data journal, uh, data paper. So you can also edit every contents in detail by clicking each section on the left. So these are um, the sections you need to add in the data paper content. And after you finish all the contents of it, you can, the tool also provides the validation to tell you uh, the missing fields before you submit your data paper. So this is the one of the articles from Biodiversity Data Journal. And you can see that um, most of the content, many of contents is already done in GBIF metadata. So please uh, write as more as you can 
in your metadata. And that was the example for uh, the biodiversity data journal. And if you want to submit to an other data paper journals, and here's are the contents you need to fill in. And the red ones are, the, are not in the metadata you should add. You should add in your data paper. Okay. So what kind of stories you should uh, write in your data papers? And you, the most important things is that it is, uh, there's no need for the claims regarding new scientific findings. And you can emphasize the potential and importance of the data reuse and how it is important to uh, biodiversity science. And also the contributions of authors and other participants. Like you need to mention the metadata provider in your data paper. And also you need to, you can provide more figures like the special information of data and some journals also in, encourage the, you can provide an experiment, experimental workflow. And you can also list the, your, maybe list the taxonomic information as the tables. Okay. Then uh, if your data set is small, and you might worry about uh, whether I can publish as a data paper or not. So that's the one important thing is the representative of your data set is more important than the data quantity. So no, it doesn't matter how many records you have. You only need to write about how important uh, how important is your data? And here are the here is the list for you. Maybe uh, it might be suitable for you if your data is about occurrence, sampling event, or um, animal records, like sort of this. So if you want to see more uh, data paper journal you can just go to the GBIF website to see all the lists of it. Okay. And uh, if everything goes well, then we will release a data paper guideline in this October, I hope. So thank you. And if you have any question, wants to ask about how to publish your data set or publish data paper, and please feel free to contact type it help decks, which is me. So this is my email below, or email below. Thank you. Can you unmute? Thank you, Melissa. Um, great talk. Um, I really encourage that uh, to the young scholar, student, especially student, also young professor to consider publishing your data set to GB and uh, <coughs> data journal. Um, you, once you publish your data set to GB, you got to do it, it's a sightable. So I know I got a question from some Southeast Asian friends say they, they publish their data through uh, our projects, uh, but the university don't consider those publications a valid publication when the university evaluated the annual performance. They asked me to talk with the universities. I got a few people talk about this question. So I, I, I think this may be something that uh, GB or BIVA can work with uh, different Asian countries to encourage them to include uh, data set publication as part of the performance assessment for the uh, young professor and also the NGO in the future. I think the one direction that probably GV can work on. So, uh, but uh, for some countries, they do consider uh, <coughs> the data set publications. So if you are from those countries that the, your university or government are not familiar with the data set publication, so this is um, the, the next step. So you can uh, consider to further publish your data 
uh, to some data journal. And uh, I think Melissa made about good points. It's uh, the, yes, there are some data journal are free, some not, uh, but uh, those are not uh, not cheap. Uh, those charge uh, the those those journal charge the fee. They also have good, very good impact factor. And you really need a very min minimal writing efforts for some of the types of the data paper. And uh, the review process is generally less than half years. So just imagine that you have a students always go to field, collect data for their thesis. Uh, they finish your thesis. They may not be able to uh, publish their uh, thesis to uh, peer review journal in English. Uh, so there is a way for you to help your student to get credits of their research, but also guarantee you, you yourself and also your organization can get the credits of the student's work. And it's also help you to have a standard and also clean data back up on internet and you can access your own data in any time. So I, I really encourage people to try and consider to uh, work with us to publish your data. And then if you don't have any experience of publication, especially the data paper, I think Melissa uh, she, and TypeBeef is always, or GBEF can always help you. Uh, Melissa have experience, help, help some uh, scholar in Taiwan to help publish their data on data journal. And for this project, uh, I think after this webinar, I will start working on our data and uh, we also aim to publish a couple of the data paper and also a review paper based upon our, all the data we collect through this project. So if you're interested in your project, if you are interested in uh, GB publication or data paper publication, uh, I just welcome you to contact me or Melissa or team GB. Uh, we are really happy if we can help anyone and uh, also happy if you can join and share your work with uh, to have a joint research in the future. So we're, we are kind of 15 minutes late. So, uh, but I already see have some question on the check box and Tin and the Gabo and Melissa already helped me to answer all the question. But if you have a further question, um, if you have a question, uh, uh, you can just email me or Tim. I will be happy to answer the question, especially for this project. I think most of you are very research. Uh, if you have any question about the data sharing of the, your data, especially the acoustics, or if you have any question about how to publish data, just contact me by email or Facebook. Okay, so I guess uh, we will reach our time limits. And uh, uh, at last, I would like to thank everyone joining the webinar, a special thanks team, uh, really support us and spend time with us and uh, share, uh, uh, introduce GB to everyone. I thank Melissa uh, to support project. Also thanks Dr. Gabo Chopa from Hungary Nature History Museum. Uh, he already leave the, the, the webinar, but he also he was also here and help us to answer the questions. Tim, you got something to say? Yeah, I, I just wanted to th thank you, Joe, and thanks, Melissa, for a great presentation, both of you. Um, just wanted to um, maybe just make one further point around um, citation and credit. Uh, I think it's you're absolutely right to um, point to data papers as a great way of um, getting into academic publishing for data in a relatively light way uh, in journals that have an impact factor and that and, and, and I completely agree it's a very good way uh, to help demonstrate the benefits of, of, of sharing data but there is a, there's, a, there's a further point that regarding data citation more generally in in GBIF remember that most of the time when people are using data through GBIF that includes some data that you will share through your data sets, this will be a download of data from many, many different institutions, all right? So someone, let's say someone is doing a modeling study uh, that uses um, maybe a, every, all data, all records of a particular bat family from from Southeast Asia, right? That's the data that is used in that research project using data through GBIF uh, will have data from maybe hundreds of different data sets. Mm -hmm. Now, remember that every time a user downloads data from GBIF, 
they will have a clear recommendation for the citation, which is part of the data use agreement uh, for GBIF, which includes one DOI, one digital object identifier, that refers to all of the records that have been downloaded. And uh, through our uh, tracking system, we always make sure that any DOI that's then associated with a research paper uh, includes a citation linked to every single one of those data sets. It doesn't matter, it can be a hundred or it can be a thousand. So that when you go to your data set page, if you share a data a set through GB, if you will, you will have a, a page with the metadata, you'll see a little button there which says citation. You click on the citation button and you will see all of the research projects that have cited a DOI uh, including data from your data sets. And that, and you're right, it is an education process, but it's another way of demonstrating the value of data sharing because you can then go to your institution and show that the value of this collection or the value of this project uh, can be demonstrated by all of the additional research that has been enabled by sharing that data through use of that, that citation. So my, my general point is that as well as the citation uh, that hopefully you will get from publishing a data paper, you will also have citations from reuse of the data that you're sharing, which you can then um, show and that, that gives the, the credit of that reuse back to your institution. So that I've just, um, yeah, it's another, I think it's, it's a very important point and it's part of the, the change of culture that I think we're all trying to uh, encourage that there's a responsibility for researchers when you use data from a, a big uh, global data set or a national database that's bringing together data from many different institutions. It's so important to use those DOI citations because that way you are sharing that credit back to those who've made the effort to go out into the forest and, and, and collect all this data. So yeah, citation works, works both ways. Thank you, team. Okay, um, I think that's the end. And uh, once again, thanks everyone for these uh, two hours with us. Uh, if you really have any question, uh, we can answer here. Just uh, please contact me or Melissa and also GP. Thank you everyone. Yeah, have a nice day. Thank you team and Melissa. Have thanks, a nice everyone. day. Bye. Bye. Oh,